Right, I think I should probably start. Um, thank you all for coming. Uh, my name is Dmitry Sitrakin. I'm a, a Chief Technology Officer at Grid Gain Systems. And I appreciate you coming here and spending time with me. I'm sure there are plenty of other things you'd like to be doing this morning. Um, uh, I hope you'll find the presentation interesting. Um, today we're going to be talking about our in-memory accelerator for MongoDB product. Uh, this is officially uh, the launch of this product. So we, uh, we have, a, a, let me switch to the next slide. We have several products already available on the market, but uh, this conference uh, we're using to launch our in-memory MongoDB product uh, to the open. Essentially, this is the first day the world is hearing about it. Uh, so uh, let's talk a little bit about agenda. We definitely are going to be talking about in-memory accelerator for MongoDB. That's our uh, product. Uh, I'm going to be describing features. I'm going to be going over use cases that uh, are potentially uh, solving problems uh, versus using native MongoDB installations. Uh, we will also at the end, I mean, this presentation is scheduled for 45 minutes, so depending on uh, how fresh I am, how much coffee I had this morning. It may go a bit anywhere between 30 minutes and 45 minutes. So if I have time at the end, I will give an overview of other great game products. But I will briefly mention them right now as well. Uh, and again, if you're doing any live tweeting, I would appreciate that you use uh, uh, hash uh, grid game tag. It makes it uh, much easier to find, much easier to search. We like to look at the tweets. We like to respond to them whenever we can. Um, a little bit of a company history. We've been in production for five years. Uh, actually, Nikita Ivanov, the CEO of the company, and myself, I'm the CTO, we, we are both founders. We started the company in 2007, and the, the first production release was in 2008. Uh, 2008. At that point, the first uh, product we released was uh, exclusively computational pro framework. Well, what we called at the time Compute Grid. Uh, since then, we went through several releases. It was five years. We went through several rounds of funding. We recently closed our round B fund, so we're extensively, rapidly growing. Uh, we doubled our team pretty much in the uh, past three months, which is, uh, some people call it healthy, some unhealthy, but we're trying to grow fast. And since then, we released quite a few products. Uh, I'll just briefly mention the names. We have in memory HPC for your uh, distributed computational needs, high performance computing distributed map, map reduce, et cetera. In memory database, your key value store that uh, uh, is this, again distributed across uh, the network, uh, fully asset, fully transactional compliant, that's our structured data store. Uh, also supports SQL queries uh, on the data that is stored in memory. We have in memory streaming to satisfy streaming and complex event processing needs. And at the same time, we have accelerator products, which are in accelerator for uh, Hadoop and accelerator for Mongo. And today we'll be talking about Accelerator for Mongo. Uh, we've been around for a while. We have hundreds of customers uh, using us in various capacity in production. Some of the pretty large deployments I'm going to be mentioning. Uh, the product starts every 10 seconds around the globe. So this is not a guesstimate. Every time I say that, uh, I get eyes rolling saying, how do you know that? Well, I mean, essentially, whenever you start any product, any infra uh, network infrastructure product, any middleware product, uh, it will do an update check. It will essentially contact the home server and find out if there is a newer version, so to notify you about uh, that update. All we do is count those checks. And uh, every 10 seconds somewhere in the world, a grid node is started. Since, uh, in, uh, since we started uh, five years ago, we now have 15 million stars globally, this is a pretty impressive number, and our stars are uh, growing exponentially rap and very rapidly. So from month to month, we're enjoying a very healthy growth. Right, uh, so let me ask you before I continue, because this is a MongoDB presentation, essentially, uh, how we use MongoDB and how we can accelerate MongoDB. I want to find out, uh, are you guys familiar with MongoDB? Uh, are you guys users of MongoDB in production? Some or some? Uh, all right. Uh, have you guys, are you guys familiar with what MongoDB sharding is? All right. So if you're not familiar, don't worry. I will explain how it works. Uh, there are slides uh, that I essentially copied of the 
Tengen MongoDB documentation site. Hopefully they don't mind because I will be explaining Tengen MongoDB uh, product on those slides. So why in-memory acceleration? Why we need it? Well, obviously when you load data in memory, it's always faster, right? So there is, uh, there is essentially uh, a notion if it's in memory, it's faster, but that's not the only reason it's faster. Essentially, when you load data in memory, it opens a whole slew of possibilities. It's a whole slew of new paradigms, new design algorithms that are possible for uh, interlocking of data, of distribution of data differently. Uh, we have concepts called MVCC, in-memory in MVCC, in-memory hyperlocking that make uh, a very different, that allow us to achieve a very different concurrency uh, on our deployments. And this is how we actually, in our, with our in-memory DB accelerate, uh, it's a very long name for the product. I have a hard time pronouncing it. Acceler memory accelerator for MongoDB, we're already achieving 10x perform or better performance. And when I say performance, I want to be very specific about it. We're not improving latencies per se. So if you had a query, one, one of query, if you're sending one of query, uh, it'll probably take as long, uh, as much time as it would execute, uh, as it would take when you're running it on Mongo. But uh, what we provide value is when you have, uh, is when you use Mongo under load. And it's a known issue, MongoDB does have problems under, under load. I'm not sure if any of you run into those, but once you scale beyond 24 in, uh, nodes, once you scale beyond terabytes of data, uh, you will at some point run into performance and scalability issues. So essentially what this means, we're not increasing latency, but we are incre increasing throughput. And whenever, and we are removing bottlenecks. So overall, you can say under load where uh, the latencies do decrease, but essentially this is uh, to, to get your throughput better. So just as, as an example, if your security system can process 5,000 requests per second, uh, with addition of our accelerator, it will be able to process 50,000 uh, requests per second. That's a significant boost. Um, and I'll be talking about it more in detail. Hor horizontal scalability to thousands of nodes. Uh, it almost sounds like a cliche. You open any website, any product line, so we're thousand X faster, we uh, deploy uh, on thousand nodes. I, I can tell you this much. We have really been deployed on the customer production sites on thousand nodes. Uh, it's a financial institution in London. I cannot mention the name, as with many financial institutions. But essentially, they put up through the most vigorous test uh, that I've ever seen. Uh, they deploy a cluster of 1,000 nodes. It's pretty much a whole data center, I mean, when you talk about 1,000 nodes. And they started plugging and unplugging the uh, nodes, uh, removing Ethernet cables, uh, restarting stuff, uh, moving data around. And the test was to make sure that no job is lost and no data is lost. And Gridgain withstood. They're our happy users. I mean, they're using Gridgain for several uh, re uh, uh, years in production and uh, already in several deployments. So we like them very much. We like this use case very much. Having said that, I don't want you to think that we only add value on 1,000 plus nodes. Uh, essentially, I mean, nobody is probably, this is a very one-off case. This is an edge case. Uh, nobody, majority of our customers do not see topologies this large. As a matter of fact, mo most common topologies are between 20, 40 nodes with a size of about 100 gigabyte to 200 gigabyte of RAM each. And uh, that may also seem like a lot of RAM, a lot of memory, but uh, let me tell you, memory is getting very cheap. Right now, like, if you have a very commodity low-end blade, which is maybe 32 gig of RAM total, if you try to upgrade to 250, where essentially increasing memory capacity eight times, you'll probably be paying 1.52x times of price. So memory is a lot cheaper than um, the value it provides. So uh, the clusters, or 25, 40 node clusters, you can uh, literally store five, six, 10 terabytes of data depending on how you approach, uh, what kind of data approach you take. Vertical scalability, that's also very important uh, because uh, as your RAM grows, we have to be able to make sure that we're able to utilize all the memory that you provide us. Otherwise, we would be wasting memory. Ideally, any memory product you want to load as much memory, uh, as much data in memory as possible. Ideally, I would load the whole data in, uh, into memory, but unfortunately, that's not always possible. Uh, so we have to pick and choose, and I will be talking about that as well. Fully, co uh, fully concurrent and memory processing. We will be talking about uh, that pr pretty much extensively throughout the slides. 
mainly because Manga is known for its concurrency issues. Uh, and mostly it has to do with global locks. I mean, they used to have a lock the world kind of approach when you're doing a write, everything else has to wait. Queries have to wait for the writes to complete. They improved that significantly. They're doing a great job at Tangent. And now they have, uh, instead of global logs, they have per database logs. And now they're working on per collection logs, and we'll see where that goes and w at which time they achieve it. But even with that, the concurrency is still not there. You do not get concurrent writes and concurrent reads. There is always waiting, especially if you hit the same database, the same collection a lot, and you're doing updates as frequently as writes, you will have, uh, you will have sequential operation uh, issue. Writes are not in parallel, Qu uh, reads are waiting for writes to complete. So we'll be talking about that as well. Efficient and balanced memory management, I'll be touching that. It essentially has to do with equal load and data distribution across your cluster. Uh, you don't get that uh, a lot. Uh, sometimes you don't get that with MongoDB, although they are doing a pretty good job at it as well. Uh, transparent backgrounds repartitioning. And lastly, I want to mention, uh, last but not least, I should say, is embedded MongoDB, Mongo API for in-memory computing. And that actually opens a whole new paradigm of how you can compute when you, uh, when you embed Mongo directly into your application. And I'll be covering that going forward on a upcoming slides as well. So now let's take a look at some of the features we have in our product. Let me start, uh, before we look at the diagram, and by the way, you'll be seeing this di diagram on several slides ahead too, just because I'm going to be talking about the features of in-memory MongoDB Accelerator. But hopefully as I progress through the slides, you'll gain better and better understanding of what we do. Actually, before I even say that, I don't want you to get the impression that we're competing with Tengen or MongoDB in any way. We actually love them, we're partnering with them, we are going to be partnering with them. Uh, we, I, I believe, my personal belief, MongoDB, uh, MongoDB API, Mongo API is one of the best document uh, store APIs out there. Used by millions of people, it's well vetted, and it's fairly flexible, especially with addition of, uh, with, of uh, aggregation framework, they did a great job of actually making queries very, fairly flexible. So our goal is for you to continue using MongoDB. And in majority of the cases, you will never need the acceleration. So most of the time, you probably will not need our product because uh, in your use case, MongoDB performs well and scales well. But uh, at some point you will reach a certain threshold in your business where you either based on data, based on number of servers, or based of number of amount, or based of new SLAs, maybe lower latencies, you will have to, you will run into some performance issues. And at that point, we hope you come to us and we'll provide the acceleration for you. And the coolest thing about our acceleration is that it's plug and play. And by plug and play, I mean you literally, if you look at the diagram on the right, everything in orange and yellow is a great game. So the teal boxes are the clients, uh, are the MongoDB clients, and as you can see, they just, as they were, we're not changing clients, as they were, they continue talking to, uh, to Mongo, but now they're talking through grid gain layer in between. So grid gain will uh, process Mongo requests, whatever, uh, execute the queries in, ever, uh, in memory whenever possible, and whenever ha it has to, and I'll, I'll talk about that too, it will delegate uh, those requests to MongoDB database. And uh, MongoDB database is uh, the same installation you guys have. We're not asking you to change that at all. And just uh, briefly, whatever we have on every node is uh, data partitions that belong to that node and local indexes that are stored on that node. So essentially, the deployment is very even. If you look, if you look here, we have, no, we have no complexity of query routers. We have no complexity of config servers. Every node is equal. There are no shards. Let me uh, say uh, in advance, and I'll be touching that again. There's no sharding for in-memory MongoDB acceleration. So you can still c uh, keep your deployment, for your Mongo deployment the way it was with shards and everything else. But in memory, we remove shards. And we believe it's a much better approach. It gives you much better concurrency when you don't have shards. But we do have partitions. We do partition data very effectively. But we're not using the uh, quote-unquote sharded approach uh, that Mongo, uh, Mongo has. Dual mode. Uh, so if you look at this diagram again, uh, let me use my laser actually. Yeah, there it is. If you look at this diagram again, you can see that grid gain is sitting in between clients and MongoDB installation. That means it serves as a caching layer. So essentially all the reads come from here, all the writes go to here, and also get propagated to MongoDB database 
either synchronously or asynchronously. So that's a right through, uh, right through uh, behavior where grid game serves as a cache and is a separate cache and layer for MongoDB installations. Uh, there's also uh, another mode uh, that uh, is very interesting because when you have data that does not need to be persisted, volatile data, collections that do not need to be in memory, uh, do not need to be in disk. And for those, you can simply store them in memory without ever propagating them to disk. Uh, and then, uh, so grid gain essentially becoming an in-memory MongoDB database. Uh, this, uh, not grid gain, the grid gain accelerator for MongoDB, essentially becoming an in-memory MongoDB database. We have plenty of those in SQL world. Uh, there are pl plenty of embedded uh, uh, or external uh, in-memory databases for SQL. I mean, I, I'm not going to list them. There are probably 10, 20 of those. But there are none of them for uh, unstructured data for no SQL world. So that's exactly another, mo another cool f one of the cool advantages you get from uh, our accelerator that you can use it standalone as an in-memory MongoDB database. And we accelerate, uh, again, Mongo deployments, thousands of nodes, as I mentioned, and uh, you gain up to 10x performance on those. Um, Let's talk about the operations we support for MongoDB. So essentially, all the core operations are supported. Uh, and uh, uh, otherwise, we wouldn't be plug and play. You wouldn't be able to simply plug it in in between. All the aggregation operations are also supported. So if you utilize a MongoDB for, uh, uh, by uh, utilizing core operations or aggregation, for, uh, aggregation framework functions, all of that should work out of the box. You should never actually have to t change the line of code. Just plug and play this, very easy to try. You will immediately see if it adds advantage or if it doesn't. If you use some admin functionality in Mongo, like uh, creating some, uh, uh, changing some uh, installation configuration, giving priorities to your replica sets or, or whatnot, that does not make sense for our in-memory mode. So we'll most likely simply propagate them to underline Mongo or ignore them or uh, depending on the operation, or give you an error that this operation simply does not support, uh, is not supported. But those I'm talking about admin functions. So day-to-day -day operational functions, your queries, your updates. <coughs> your... May I have your attention, please? Your attention, please. May I have your attention, please? A fire has been reported in the building. Are you kidding me? <laughs> no. Do we continue or do we evacuate? Is that a drill? I think that we'd be hearing more of a fire. I I saw a fire truck like 20 minutes ago. May I have your attention, please? The fire has been extinguished. This was a false alarm. The <laughs> false alarm. Do not evacuate. All right. Okay. Uh, that was interesting. <laughs> so I lost my train of thought. What was I talking about? Um, so full operations are supported. And let me talk about uh, that our accelerator is optimized for disk first approach versus, uh, for memory first approach versus disk first approach. And this is a very important distinction. Lots of database systems are built with the disk first in mind. They're primarily a disk based system, including MongoDB installation. Mon MongoDB is a disk based database. They do have caching. But the, all, the assumption that always ha happens in that approach is that majority of data is on disk and very little of data is in memory. So you, you get about 90% of, of data stored on disk, about 10% of data stored in memory. So with, with a memory approach, uh, there's actually a reverse of that, the 100% of data stored in memory. So you actually get, you never get memory paging because whenever you have a majority of data on disk, there's constant paging back and forth happening happening and you essentially uh, end up hitting disk a lot and queries uh, get slowed down a lot. We entirely remove I.O. From, uh, from disk, which also gives us a performance boost. Dealing with being a Java product and dealing with huge amounts of data, of huge amounts of memory space, uh, we have to make sure that uh, our Java garbage collection works effectively. So Java is known for not being very efficient whenever you exceed um, go beyond 20 gig of RAM, you get minutes and minutes of pauses of garbage collection. Those are usually like the world. For that, we actually manage data on heap and off heap. 
uh, we, we put on heap exactly what uh, Java can handle, and the rest of the data on, uh, is handled off heap. You can get a ratio of 20 gig on heap, 300, uh, 300, 20 gigabytes on heap, 300 gigabytes off heap kind of ratio. Uh, direct memory access versus block access. Whenever you work with disk, whenever you work with files, you load data in blocks. So that's how your operating system works. It accesses data in blocks, loads it, and unloads it in blocks. Whenever you have in-memory in approach, data is accessed directly. You need a certain data, you simply access the pointer, uh, you, you, you get the data that is stored in memory. There's, there's no marshalling and marshalling serializing to and from disk at all. So, and on top of that, since all our servers are equal when they're deployed, we entirely remove a need for, uh, uh, on this layer, where grid gain is, we entirely remove a need for MongoS, and that actually removes an extra network hub for us. Usually a network hub generally is equal, depending on your network capacity, to X performance. Uh, to, it adds latencies uh, every time, especially when it goes through software, not through hardware, it's, uh, it adds latencies. So we remove MongoS, which actually already gives us a significant performance advantage. And also what we can get here with a memory first approach, as I mentioned, we get uh, to utilize much more efficient algorithms like hyperlocking that we have, which is group locking, uh, very uh, con concurrent free uh, MVCC approach, which is very efficient. You never get any contention within grid gain. Dual operation mode. That actually goes together with probably effective uh, memory management. So we have four modes in which this uh, accelerator can operate. Uh, one mode is a primary mode when essentially everything is stored in memory. Not everything, the collections and databases you choose are stored in memory and will never be persisted to disk. Uh, all the queries and updates can still happen, uh, probably a lot faster than they would happen if they were persisted. But at the same time, you have to realize everything that is stored in memory will not survive a restart. If your whole cluster crashes, even though we provide redundancy, if a last node in the cluster crashes, you lose your data that is stored exclusively in memory. We also have a proxy mode. So we'll let you pick and choose which collections are stored in memory, which collections are stored only in Mongo, and which collections or databases are stored in both places, Mongo and memory. So proxy mode is exactly for the cases when collections are stored in Mongo in Mongo on disk. Essentially, we simply will proxy your request through to Mongo without, even, uh, without uh, even doing any processing. And those are usually the collections that you don't care about in your application, uh, the ones that uh, are accessed infrequently and you do not care how slow they are. So you don't want to put them in memory simply because you do not want to occupy memory with uh, something that you do not need. And dual sync and dual async modes uh, are exactly when you utilize grid gain as a caching layer for MongoDB. All the updates, it's essentially a write through. All the updates happen in memory and can be persisted to MongoDB either synchronously or asynchronously. In asynchronous mode, it will be a lot more efficient. We'll accumulate them together and then we'll power, uh, send them in, uh, in bulks. Uh, however, you do get additional delays. My experience, MongoDB users already used to delays. Uh, there, there are several write concerns that uh, already say, like if you use acknowledged or unacknowledged write concerns, for instance, in Mongo, uh, then uh, the replicas will not be updated, or maybe even uh, the primary node will not be updated, and operation can already finish. So uh, essentially, a, a lot of Mongo deployments already used used to delays and used to lags. So uh, dually sync mode, we find that people are actually reacting to it very pos positively and not too concerned that some data may be lost. And that goes with efficient memory management. As I said, you can pick any database, you can pick any collection to store either in memory or on disk. Uh, so it, it, yes, go ahead. I, I actually, I'm going to go through an example that actually shows uh, how, how you split them up. But uh, I recommend that anything that you want persisted, uh, use either in dual sync or dual async. Anything that you don't care about performance, use as a proxy. And do you also have the performance Yeah, if you use dual async, of course, the writes will, uh, there's going to be overhead to write because now you have to update memory and disk. If you use dual async, no. Uh, you, you're as fast as memory because the async flash happens in the background by another process. But have you quantified the, the relative performance loss or gain? Or? 
uh, we, we identified the gain on performance. I mean, what do you think, I mean, uh, you are not go we're not going to beat Mongo in performance for writes simply because we're doing them synchronously. So we essentially, what are we talking about? I'm going to use my laser pen again. Uh, what are we talking about? The, that whenever an update comes, first, this is updated. And when I say this is, I mean one or two nodes are updated here. Grid gain does not have to update all the nodes. Data is partitioned. Uh, and then MongoDB has to be updated synchronously. And then a response is sent back. So you cannot, uh, since MongoDB update is part of your processing, you cannot be faster than MongoDB update here. However, in async approach, you update a couple of nodes here, send the response back, and then asynchronously update MongoDB. And in that case, you, you're getting in-memory speed, but you still get disk-based persistence. So my recommendation, whenever you can use this, dual async. Uh, Right, but uh, with dual async, you can lose, you can potentially lose some data that has not been flushed to Mongo yet. In other mode you can uh, have is, you can have dual sync mode and flush to Mongo, but uh, have it uh, in a journal, uh, around Mongo in a journal fashion when uh, it will immediately reply, but will not flush to disk itself. But at the same time, it will keep journal. So whenever you restart Mongo, it will still not load the data. So, um, <laughs> so, I'm, uh, so in that case, you will have minimal data loss, if any, but you will still get pretty close to in-memory speeds. So ideal here, I mean, we're fixing performance. We're fixing uh, throughput and performance. So we want to make sure that the modes in which you utilize Mongo are, have the least effect on overall latency and overall throughput that your in-memory layer can, uh, can handle. Does that answer the question? Yes. Okay. And another cool thing I want to mention, uh, we, I mean, we do have custom load and unload data, uh, command uh, collections data. So we actually have commands for loading collections and databases from Mongo to, to in-memory layer, uh, either through our management console or directly from command line in Mongo. And one cool thing is field name compaction. Uh, I'm sure Mongo will eventually probably do it. I mean, this is a fairly simple feature to ignore. But with field name compaction, we're able to save about 30, 40% of memory. So if it occupies uh, one terabyte on disk you, and you utilize field name compaction, you can get it to five, 600 gigabyte in memory. And the thing is, I mean, field, name re field names repeat. And for us, a field name becomes an integer, not a string. So we always use no more than a four, four bytes for field name. Uh, locally, locally on every node. I mean, it doesn't even have to be distributed. Every node has its own field name compaction. And then uh, uh, whenever we have to, in you know, rare cases when data has to move, and I'll talk uh, about why they're rare, we'll uncompact and move. But uh, the idea here is to, memory is a scarce resource, right? So the idea here is to minimize the use of memory. So if you have terabyte and you can fit it in, five, in a half a terabyte, why not? Right? So that's exactly what field name compactions do. A another cool thing to think about it as, as we're on the topic, that every data gets backed up, right? I mean, if you optionally gets backed up. So if you, uh, here you have redundancy in grid gain layer. You do have redundancy and you can actually optionally say that every key stored here gets backed up either here, here, on, on other nodes. With field name uh, compaction, you almost get backups for free. So one, if your data occupied one terabyte on disk, you, you can continue to occupy it in memory also within one terabyte, but now you do have, uh, you do have backups. So if one node crashes, another node, uh, other nodes will still have the data, so you don't have data loss, you know, in memory data loss. Fully concurrent. Uh, this is probably the most important uh, feature uh, that our in memory layer adds. Essentially, as, we, as I mentioned before, Mongo uh, is, uh, does have this concurrency problem. I mean, people are, uh, there's a lot of blocks on the internet. People are complaining about it left and right. Essentially, a global write uh, global write lock does not allow you to pro uh, to perform uh, concurrent write operations. Moreover, whenever writes happen, you cannot perform any read operations. So all the reads get um, queued up, waiting for writes to complete. Um, with a memory approach, we can we're actually capable of fully removing it. So the and the reason is uh, uh, simply because we, uh, we have a very efficient MVCC-based architecture. It's essentially log-free, contention-free. So 
in your write, in your read can happen in parallel. Uh, actually, there's absolutely no waiting between any operations that happen in, in memory layer. And that's where actually majority of performance gain comes from because our in-memory approach makes reads and uh, makes concurrent reads and writes possible. And also the same thing com comes to, uh, to document indexing. If your data updates are fast but indexing is slow, uh, it still adds no advantage. So we add concurrency to our indexes as well. We actually use a very effective modified by uh, our uh, engineers, very effective uh, approach using con uh, snap trees. Uh, have you go uh, guys heard about snap trees? It's essentially, essentially very effective way to, uh, to, uh, uh, to create a tree-based representation of data in memory. Uh, uh, essentially, how you, uh, that's how your index looks. But all the updates are concurrent. And one of the coolest features here is that snapshot of a snap tree is instantaneous. Whenever you're working with indexes, I mean, you're utilizing an index and you're pulling out data, you want to make sure that all the data you're pulling out is consistent because index is changing in the background, uh, potentially with all the updates that are going on. So you want to take a snapshot of existing index and work on that. And snap trees, one of their main features, they give uh, instantaneous snapshots. Uh, the complexity of uh, constant time, big O, not big O of one, and that's exactly what makes it very efficient for uh, indexing. And uh, the indexing is actually utilized, also utilizes on-heap and off-heap uh, memory in Java. And last but not least, I want to mention embedded mode. And the reason I want to actually I dedicate a whole slide to it, because it actually changes the paradigm how you actually utilize your unstructured database. Uh, this is actually only for JVM clients. Uh, since we're Java product, we can only embed with, uh, within JVM. But if you are using any JVM-based client, like Java, Scala, Groovy, or what's not, you can actually utilize this approach. And this approach is actually collocation. Or, uh, whenever you actually collocate your MongoDB data together with your application logic. So traditionally, uh, the way you have, uh, have it deployed is you have an application layer, and then you have a database layer. And then in the middle, you also have a Mongo S layer, query router, config servers, and application level constantly goes through all these hoops to get to the data and get it back. Uh, with this approach, you locate the data directly on the application server. So you still get the same API, you're still using the same API, but all that network hub, all those network hubs are gone. This actually gives us 5x additional performance. So now we're talking about um, 50x performance boost whenever you're using this approach. Uh, absolutely, yeah. You can have, uh, first of all, you still have Mongo. Uh, you still have this persistence whenever you want. It's either, nothing changed from that standpoint. It's either synchronous or asynchronous. But we, right. Uh, but, and we store it in memory close to your domain logic. Uh, at the same time, we have in-memory redundancy. You can configure one, two, three, ten backups. So you can have as many backups as, as you like. Same uh, cool thing about it that you still utilize the same APIs for Monco drivers. So pretty much very minimal code changes for you. But now you can actually do a lot more than you, you used to be able to do. Now you're able to. We provide a lot of APIs just to tell you where, which node, which uh, server the data is located on. Now you can actually send closure, send your functions to execute directly on the nodes where the data is. It actually changes to the paradigm entirely because in traditional approach, you bring data to the application. You constantly bring data from database to the application. Now in this deployment, in embedded deployment, uh, you can achieve an architecture where you have zero data movement. The moving data is actually the most expensive operation uh, your, your cluster can do. It actually involves serialization, deserialization. When, when a lot of it happens, it can actually saturate the network, bring your servers to, the knees, to, uh, to their knees. Here, you, you minimize that by, by only sending lightweight computations to the nodes where the data is. So that actually creates a whole new paradigm, whole new range of possibilities that were not possible before. So whenever possible, whenever it, uh, it is possible for you to use it in embedded mode, I strongly recommend you do that because the performance gain, gain and scalability gains will be enormous. You have questions about this? Yeah. Well, if you, first of all, it, uh, it will not work if you are not using 
uh, since we're a Java product, the, we can only embed into JVM based applications. So if you're using Ruby, you're using uh, Python, you would still have to use uh, external mode, which we also support and which also gives you a good productivity boost. But in those cases, you would not have an option of bringing it in. So it works only for JVM based languages. Does this make sense? Any other limitations? Well, I mean, uh, essentially what this approach means is that you collocate your data with your uh, app servers. So your app servers have to be powerful enough to hold that data, right? So uh, if your app server had 10 gigabyte of RAM, probably collocating, your, uh, uh, ha uh, collocating half a terabyte of Mongo data with it probably will not do any good. So uh, essentially if your app servers are powerful, powerful 120 gig of RAM to 50 gig of RAM, then you can actually use this approach quite effectively. And as a matter of fact, my majority of our customers, even in, not in, only in this approach, uh, not only in, for Manga, but uh, also for our in-memory uh, database, in-memory scale database approach, utilize this. So they throw away the app servers, upgrade them, and bring the data to the, to the app servers, because this approach gives, removes network hubs, and that's exactly what you want to achieve. Because those powerful data servers, you need them regardless to store your data. So it's a matter of fact, actually, to move your application logic there and remove part of your infrastructure. So it actually simplifies their deployment. Any more questions about this? All right. And this actually is a screenshot. I'm not going to spend too much time on this slide. This is actually a screenshot of uh, our uh, management console, which actually shows lots of graph, lots of metrics about everything that goes on in your in-memory layer. You can even uh, you run queries from, uh, 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 um, to look into production data directly from your management console. So let's take a look actually at how Mongo replica sets are working and how Mongo, MongoDB natively uh, uh, sharding is working. This actually picture taken directly from MongoDB documentation site. And uh, essentially what we, oops, uh, what we have here is a primary, uh, uh, a replica set has to have a master or a primary node and then as many secondary as you like. So essentially, this is actually a pretty standard size replica set with three nodes. And the uh, pros about it is it's fault tolerant. Uh, it, uh, uh, if primary fails, another node assumes primary responsibility. But uh, the cons are the data is not partitioned. You got four, replications, uh, four data replications across all nodes. So if your primary node holds a terabyte of data, all secondary nodes also hold a terabyte of data. So replicating between primary and secondary becomes expensive. You have to move large amounts of data. Uh, excessive memory paging. And the reason it's excessive is because you cannot load the whole terabyte of data in memory on every server. You probably will load 250 or maybe 120 gigabyte of RAM, 250 gigabyte of RAM. So memory constantly gets paged in and out from memory to disk, from disk to memory. That is one of the major pain points that our customers complain about uh, Mongo. Lots of paging, slow down the queries. Uh, and again, the writes are still not concurrent because all writes go from the, through the primary node. So if, uh, and while the writes happening, the queries have to wait. So the concurrency suffers here. So this one replica set, uh, essentially this is one shard. This is how Mongo shard looks. Uh, now let's take a look at sharded architecture. Now you have more than one replica set here and here. Now you also added config servers and your Mongo S query routers. You can handle bigger throughput with it. You get more parallelism on writes because now writes here in this shard do not conflict with writes in this shard. So they can happen uh, concurrently. But they're still not fully parallel and especially when your queries span both shards, they have to wait for writes now happening in both shards. And deployment is somewhat complex. I do not like this uh, deployments when every server is a designated server. Like in grid gain, we have a deployment, every server is equal. You never have to worry what's master, what's, uh, what, uh, what's secondary or config servers. We don't have those uh, uh, deployment pieces. You just bring up a grid node and it just starts working. So that's your MongoDB sharding. Let's take a look at what, uh, grid, how grid gain data partition is different. First of all, we have no sharding. Very important point, sharding is removed. No need for query router. Data can go, uh, your, your query request can come to any of these nodes. And uh, 
that node will route it properly within the grid if needed. So we do not uh, have that extra network have that uh, present among the S's. Data is split into ranges or chunks amongst, not shards. So essentially if Manga has five shards, grid gain has one cluster. All nodes are equal and every, if you have 10 nodes in a grid gain cluster, every node will hold one tenth of data. If you have 20 nodes, every node will hold uh, one twentieth of data. So we partition data across without having to physically shard them and uh, provide some extra level of redundancy and complexity on deployment. Data is equally distributed within shards, within partitions. So data is partitioned and every partition, since our partitions are smaller and constantly get repartitioned in memory, data is uh, uh, very evenly distributed and load is very e evenly distributed as well. Uh, there's redundancy and writes and reads, uh, writes and reads are fully concurrent. So, that's actually the difference. This is where we get performance boost. Let's actually, what am I doing on time? I have about five more minutes. I'll go quick. Let's actually go through sample use case. Uh, this is actually a customer for which we uh, did our beta deployment uh, and which our accelerator really helped. Let's imagine a case where you have very many large amount of, uh, a very large amount of queries in real time. And they had a use case where they had to store three to five terabytes of data uh, they uh, had updates coming in almost as frequent as reads. So essentially they had a lot of concurrency issues, but SLAs were under one second. So let's see the problem that they had. They had well, first of all, they had five shards. Every shard was holding one terabyte each. Uh, every shard had three replicas in a shard, so one primary, two secondaries. And so they had about 15 uh, servers total and three config servers in their deployment and a couple of Mongo S's. So their problem statement is this. Uh, small, uh, since every shard uh, holds one terabyte, only a small portion of that terabyte fits in memory. And before performance gets poor, uh, the, more, the more data the queries touches, uh, touch, the, the poorer the performance gets because the data keeps constantly paging, uh, getting paging in and out of memory. Well, it's, and this gets even slower when the queries span multiple shards. Uh, and uh, they had cases where some queries were taking minutes, not seconds. So after they introduced grid gain accelerator into the mix, uh, first of all, we were able uh, to utilize their existing infrastructure. We have not added a single node, single server to, to their existing infrastructure. You start a grid gain node on uh, uh, every server, only put highly utilized collections in memory. So they had about three or four collections that were hit the heaviest, and the rest, they didn't even care about performance. So those, the heaviest collections they wanted in memory, they were the biggest collections, they were pretty heavy, they wanted them fast. So only those got put uh, in memory, and from five terabytes, uh, we went to three terabytes, including with field compaction. So we were able to feed them on 15 servers with 56 gig of RAM per server. Uh, essentially now, all the data is in memory, all the queries are extremely fast, there's no paging. Uh, there's no hot data or cold data. All the data is in memory. It's always hot. It's always at, at your fingertips. You always load it. Uh, you always access it right there in your application logic. Uh, there's even load and data distribution because of our ranges are smaller and we're constantly repartition in the background. The data is evenly split. So all the, there's, uh, you don't get into cases when one node is loaded 90% and another is 20. All the nodes are always, um, are always fast. And just by adding this, literally with almost zero code change, that most of their queries started taking under a second. Imagine going from one min from minutes to seconds just by adding this in-memory layer component. That's actually a pretty powerful message. All right, just, and this is just uh, recapping uh, this stuff. I'm gonna go pretty quickly here. I have about one minute. Actually, you know, I'm going, I'm going to skip it, uh, but I pretty much give you a comparison already of uh, what uh, in-memory approach, uh, advantage of in-memory approach versus disk approach, and make sure, uh, what I, uh, remember that you always have to use it in conjunction. MongoDB is not going anywhere. We love it, we want, we want you to continue using it, but do add this in-memory layer whenever you actually have performance issues and you're struggling with performance. And just a quick overview, and I'm, I just wanna spend one minute here on our overall product stack. So these are the products offered Oops, what did I do? These are the products offered by GridGain. 
And these are what we call our platform products. And this is what we call our integrated products. So for platform pl products, we have in-memory HPC, in-memory database, and in-memory streaming. All, uh, essentially, it's a, a grid game is, uh, should be your one place stop for a majority of your computing, in-memory computing needs. Uh, in-memory HPC provides you in-memory map reduce, uh, full tolerance, load balancing, distributed closure execution, distributed thread pools, all the power that you need to compute across multiple nodes you will see in in-memory HPC. In-memory database is our structured database. So we have actually two products in our uh, uh, in grid game, uh, for one for structured data and one for unstructured data, which is our MongoDB accelerator. So structured database is actually your key value store, with, uh, full, which is fully transactional, provides a lot of uh, full asset support. But the coolest feature about it is that it allows you to execute SQL queries over your key value data stored in memory. And in memory, in memory streaming is actually the cool use case is when you get huge amount of data streaming into your system and you have to process it without bottlenecking. Because there are plenty of ways to process it with bottlenecks because, I mean, you can load it in an Oracle database all the time, but that will be slow. Once uh, with streaming, you can never hit disk. So that's exactly the uh, feature that in-memory streaming provides. It provides you everything that Storm provides, essentially, but it also provides you the sliding window approach. It lets you answer questions such as, well, what is my top 10 popular users over the last 24 hours? Because you, as your streaming data never ends, this window of 24 hours, for instance, or five last hours will always move forward. So this answer so will also constantly be changing. So they allow you to index into this window and provide answers very fast. And uh, lastly, our accelerators, in-memory accelerator for Hadoop and in-memory accelerator for MongoDB, for which I already talked about. So I'm going to conclude it now. Um, do, the, do visit our site, do download our product, and uh, we use Twitter actively. You can uh, follow us on Twitter, at uh, GridGain, or follow myself, at DC Tracking. Uh, please do, do check us out, and please do post about us. So that's about it. I'm, I, I, unfortunately, I'm, out, I'm out of time, so I have to conclude this. Thank you.